You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on The Gifted Adult. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on The Gifted Adult, a revolutionary guide for liberating everyday genius by Mary Elaine Jacobson, D. We'll start with a quote from Mary Elaine Jacobson. She says, Of course you're different. You're intense, complex, and driven because you're gifted. End quote. The Gifted Adult. This may be a book that you missed, despite the fact that it is read by many people all over the world. I still can't remember how I discovered it, but I'm thrilled I did. And I think you're going to love it. If you're digging these philosopher's notes, you're almost definitely one of the millions of everyday geniuses out there. In fact, Mary counts over 20 million in the U.S. alone. These are individuals who are looking to most fully and authentically give their gifts to the world but unfortunately, too often have the feeling of a sense of purpose that's just not quite fulfilled. Does that sound vaguely familiar? If so, I highly recommend the book. It was a life changer for me when I first read it several years ago, and it's been refreshing to reread it after quite a bit of growth, reflecting on the seeds planted by the book that have now taken firm root in my life. You're busy, I'm busy, so let's jump right in, shall we? My gut is that if we're going to learn some big ideas about how we can unleash our everyday genius, we might as well start by understanding where the word genius came from, right? All right, so we'll start there with our first big idea, genius. I quote, genius was derived from a word used by the ancient Romans, who considered genius a guiding inborn spirit who protects, reassures, and coaches throughout life, end quote. That's from page 73. So did you know the origin of the word genius can be traced back to Roman mythology? In Roman times, a community, family, or individual was said to have a guardian spirit or genius. Whenever an individual performed brilliantly, whether it was athletically or intellectually, it was said that their genius had guided them. I kind of like to think that we all have our own little mini-me genius on our shoulder. So how's yours? Here's a quote on genius for you. Improvement makes straight roads, but the crooked roads without improvement are the roads of genius. That's from William Blake. And the next big idea is strengths and service. Quote, for the everyday genius, being fully alive entails two distinct but inseparable missions. First, being free to be oneself. And second, being dedicated to the betterment of others' lives. End quote. This reminds me of Deepak Chopra's wisdom from his wonderful The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. He says, quote, When you combine the ability to express your unique talent with service to humanity, then you make full use of the law of Dharma. End quote. It's the same thing Martin Seligman, the author of Authentic Happiness, discusses in his seminal book. Namely, to have a happy life, we must discover and use our, quote, signature strengths. To have a meaningful life, we must use these strengths in the greatest service to the world. So two things. One, know who you are. Know what your unique strengths and gifts are. You can usually find that by discovering what makes you giddy. Those times when you feel most alive, when time evaporates and you're in a state of bliss. And number two, commit yourself to discovering and using these gifts in service to something greater than yourself. Commit yourself to bettering others' lives. So, who are you? How are you giving yourself to the world? As you ponder that, think about the next big idea, evolutionary intelligence. So, in her great book, Jacobson suggests we pay more attention to a measure she calls, quote, evolutionary intelligence that, quote, fuses extraordinary abilities with three elements of advanced development, humanistic vision, mandated mission, and revolutionary action which re-envisions what it means to be bright and capable, end quote. In her world, quote, self-realization would accompany making a valuable difference, end quote. Complete with a battery of self-assessments, the bulk of her book is spent helping us understand our evolutionary intelligence, and most importantly, how we're using this intelligence in serving the world as we live at our highest potential. Powerful, very powerful stuff. So the next big idea is number two pencils and multiple intelligences. 
Howard Gardner says, quote, In the course of their careers in the American school of today, most students take hundreds, if not thousands, of tests. They develop skill to a highly calibrated degree in an exercise that will essentially become useless immediately after their last day of school. End quote. So I don't know about you, but I haven't filled out too many bubbles with my number two pencil lately. Isn't it kind of funny how we get really good at something that we never use in our lives? It reminds me of T. Harv Eker's statement in Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Quote, I don't know about you, but where I went to school, money management 101 wasn't offered. Instead, we learned about the War of 1812, which, of course, is something I use every single day. That's hilarious. And if you haven't noticed, our school systems don't do a whole lot to prepare people to excel after school. Where was the class on discovering our greatest strengths and crafting a life on how to best give them in greatest service to the world? Hmm, maybe you're taking it now. In any case, one of the key components to evolutionary intelligence and everyday genius is understanding your multiple intelligences, as developed by Harvard researcher Howard Gardner, who spoiled us with many different types of intelligences that we all have in varying degrees from logical, linguistic, visual, spatial, and musical rhythmic, to bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal, intrapersonal, and naturalistic intelligence. We've all got so many areas where we can express our true genius. IQ isn't the reason for Michael Jordan's genius. That was his kinesthetic intelligence. IQ wasn't the reason for Mozart's genius. That was his musical intelligence. IQ wasn't the reason for Lincoln's genius. That was his interpersonal and intrapersonal genius. So what do all these geniuses have in common? Much more than their IQ, they all discovered and developed their specific intelligences. They focused on what they were great at, aka their genius, and worked, or was it played, extremely hard to reach their potential. Another thing they all have in common? You couldn't pay them enough to not do what they do. When you feel that strongly about what you're doing, that's a pretty good sign you're on your way to experiencing your genius. So, what's your genius? The next big idea is EVI equals MI plus GT plus AD. In other words, evolutionary intelligence equals multiple intelligences plus gifted traits plus advanced development. So you'll want to get the book to experience the depth of great assessments that Jacobson has developed to lead people through the discovery of their multiple intelligences and gifted traits. Her notion of advanced development is what I most love. It is composed of three elements and is the driving force behind taking this knowledge of your gifts and truly giving them to the world in a lifetime of creative service. She says, quote, advanced development encompasses humanistic vision, mandated mission, and revolutionary action. These higher-level attributes enable those who develop them to both see the world and have a commitment to the collective good, rooted in spiritual values and the recognition of the oneness of life. End quote. And I love her concept of a mandated mission that she defines as, quote, a resolute, inner-directed, uncompromising goal orientation that strives in concert with one's life's purpose. It is most recognizable in the form of steadfast individual perseverance. The person who perseveres against all odds to fulfill an obligation or dream often seems foolhardy to the less optimistic individuals, end quote. That's amazing. So what is your mandated mission? That resolute, inner-directed, uncompromising goal orientation that really connects you to your life's purpose. And the compassion from our humanistic vision and the perseverance generated by our mandated mission is catalyzed by our willingness to take revolutionary action, which she describes as, quote, the conceptual leap or leap of faith, the ability to take action beyond accepted norms. It is the active ingredient of evolutionary intelligence through which we see a real world manifestation of high potential. It is the dream made real, the world made flesh. And the book brilliantly walks us through an array of tests to hone our self-awareness and then presses on through each of the components involved in liberating our everyday genius. It's been one of the most influential books I've read in helping me understand why I have the drive I have and why I have often felt so out of place in a world not comfortable 
with such intensity and commitment to higher ideals. And if you're listening to this, my hunch is we share a lot in common. As such, I'm pretty confident in my recommendation that you're going to love the book. And I think you'll appreciate the perspective and the tools of self-discovery and empowerment you'll discover in it. So let's go to the next big idea. Whose world do you live in? Jacobson talks at length about the fact that we everyday geniuses are fundamentally different than most, and our attempts at being normal are typically far from successful. As she says, quote, it is essential to remember to work with, not around, your own uniqueness, end quote. And one of the key themes of her book is to empower us to realize that what we may have perceived as our greatest weaknesses, our incredible intensity, our hopping from project to project or job to job, our relentless pursuit of goals, are really signs of a deeper set of attributes that, when we truly own them, are the keys to our liberation. Jacobson asks us, quote, What are some of your attributes the world may see as liabilities? Are you too intense, too scattered, too sensitive, too driven? too different? Why don't we totally redefine our relationship to the attributes that make us who we are? And remember Nietzsche's wisdom, who says, the great epics of our life come when we gain the courage to rechristen our evil as what is best in us. So how's that for a challenge? What evil do you need to rechristen? Rechristen it, and here's to the next great epic of our lives. And that leads us to the next big idea, silencing the critics. Ah, the inner critic. As the Buddha says, more than those who hate you, more than all your enemies, an undisciplined mind does greater harm. How true is that? So how's your internal dialogue? Are you even aware of just how much you criticize yourself? It's pretty crazy when you really start to notice what's going on up there in our minds. And of course, we face a barrage of criticism from the outside world. Jacobson spends an entire chapter walking us through the criticisms commonly thrown at gifted adults and provides some cool alternative responses like these. Criticism number eight that she has. Can't you just stick with one thing? And our new response is, no, probably not. And criticism 10 is, why don't you slow down? And the new response is, going fast is normal for me. And criticism number one, who do you think you are? And the new response is, a humble, everyday genius called to serve. Love it. So who do you think you are? A humble, everyday genius is a good answer. Here to serve the world. All right, the next big idea is hard work. Quote, the difference between a creative person and a creative producer is hard work, end quote. So how about you? Are you a creative person or a creative producer? Do you have any great ideas, any driving missions you feel called to bring to the world? My hunch is you do. It might be the book you know you need to write, or the business you want to build, or the blog you want to start, or the amazing family you want to create. Or maybe it's just taking yourself to the next level. You're already an incredible creative producer, but you have more in you. Whatever it is, ask yourself the question, am I willing to work hard to bring that ideal vision to my life? And we know the answer is, of course you are. And remember as you do that, to bounce back. Quote, remember, no matter how ready and willing you are, all change is inevitably interspersed with backsliding. But everyday geniuses are programmed to bounce back. You can find that on page 165. And I love that. Are you programmed to bounce back? It's a learned skill that takes practice to master, but bouncing back from the inevitable downs and the ups and downs is a mandatory skill, as you know, if you want to bring your highest self to the world. Because if you haven't noticed, once in a while things don't go quite as planned. So how do you respond when something goes wrong? Imagine if you had a team of coaches and parents and friends and advisors who shared this wisdom with you when you fell down. How about Mary Kay, who says, for every failure, there's an alternative course of action. You just have to find it. When you come to a roadblock, take a detour. Or how about Robert F. Kennedy, who says, only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. David Viscott says, in the end, the only people who fail are those who don't try. And Michael Jordan has a couple great ones. There was never any fear for me, no fear of failure. If I miss a shot, so what? 
And he says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeeded. That's hot. How about a few more? Anthony DeMello, in his great book, Awareness, says, Get rid of your fear of failure. Your tensions about succeeding, you will be yourself, relaxed. You wouldn't be driving with your brakes on. That's what would happen. And Walter Russell says in The Man Who Tapped the Secrets of the Universe, quote, I never let the thought of failure enter my mind. My knowledge of my unity with the Universal One and the fact that I must do this thing and the inspired belief I should do it as a demonstration of my belief in man's unlimited power made me ignore the difficulties that lay in the way. And Donnie Deutsch, in the uh, his great book, Often Wrong, Never in Doubt, who's the guy behind the Big Idea Show, by the way, says, there are moments in business and in life when you have to say, failure is not an option. And how about James Russell Lowell, who says, not failure, but low aim is crime. All right, I can go on forever, and I'm going to have a few more here just to get the point home. Vince Lombardi says, In great attempts, it is glorious even to fail. William Faulkner says, All of us have failed to reach our dreams of perfection, so I rate us on the basis of our splendid failure to do the impossible. And finally, Thomas Watson says, The fastest way to succeed is to double your rate of failure. Wow, so are you failing towards success? Or are you beating yourself up with every little misstep? Might want to integrate a Jordan-esque air to your perspective on failing and just take the shot again and again and again. All right. The final big idea in this note on the gifted adult is co-creators. Quote, we are driven by purpose. We do not simply choose to drive ourselves toward our personal goals. If we heed the wisdom of our subconscious agenda, as made known to us by our daemon, our guiding inner spirit or genius, and consciously reflect on our own unique place in the scheme of human evolution, we can accept ourselves as responsive co-creators who merely collaborate with destiny instead of attempting to force it into place. End quote. That's from page 173 in case you're curious. And that is hot. So do you beat your own heart and grow your own hair and digest your own food? Is that something you consciously spend a lot of time thinking about and making sure it goes just right in your day-to-day life? Right. So why do we think we're all alone in this living on purpose thing? Do you really think you came up with all your goals and dreams and missions on your own? My vote is let's trust our guiding genius as we co-create our ideals and have an absolutely wonderful time playing with our everyday genius. All right, that wraps up this quick look at great book, The Gifted Adult. Let's take a quick look at Mary Elaine Jacobson, the author, some of the other notes I think you'd enjoy, and then some of the quotes from the sidebar of the PDF. So Dr. Mary Elaine Jacobson is a clinical psychologist and professor with extensive expertise and high potential. She is considered the world's leading expert on adult giftedness, and is the originator of talent psychology. Her consultation services include speaking, assessment, training, and coaching for gifted adults, business leaders, talent developers, and creative artists. Her work ranges from biomedical innovators to novelists, and think tanks to organizational development directors in public and private sectors. Her articles on gifted adults appear in several scholarly journals, from Mensa Research Journal of the summer of 2008, for example. The Gifted Adult is the only book of its kind, and readers from over 18 countries continue to report how this book has changed their lives and set their talents free. For presentations, organizational consulting, assessment, training, or individual coaching, email Dr. Jacobson at mjacobson at isgaa.org. That's mjacobson at isgaa.org. And you can buy the book through a link in the PDF. So if you like this note, you'll probably also like the notes on authentic happiness, mastery, and man's search for meaning. All right, so let's take a quick look at some of those quotes from the sidebar. We'll start with Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, who said, Half a century ago, 
The Austrian psychiatrist Viktor Frankl wrote that happiness cannot be attained by wanting to be happy. It must come as the unintended consequence of working for a goal greater than oneself. Carl Sagan says, We are at a crossroads in human history. Never before has there been a moment so simultaneously perilous and promising. We are the first species to have taken our own evolution into our own hands. Pablo Picasso says, My mother said to me, If you are a soldier, you will become a general. If you are a monk, you will become the Pope. Instead, I was a painter and became Picasso. I love that. All right, Albert Einstein says, I do receive much criticism from the outside world, but this does not really touch me because I feel that these people do not live in the same world as I do. It's from the big idea on whose world do you live in. And then we have Hugo von Hofmannsthal, who says, The most dangerous of our prejudices reign in ourselves against ourselves. To dissolve them is a creative act. Samuel Goldwyn says, Don't pay any attention to the critics. Don't even ignore them. That's genius. And Dr. Mary Elaine Jacobson says, There is surely no point in being a person of vision unless we have the will to act. Daydreams and inklings about taking our personal mission seriously must be translated into action or be lost in the dust of could have but didn't. And finally, Anais Nin says, Life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. So how about your life? Expand it. Push some edges. Really bring your everyday genius to life. Pretty please. All right, that wraps up this note. I trust you enjoyed, and I wish you an absolutely incredible day. Look forward to sharing more with you soon. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.